rises in. Joining us now via Skype from Tel Aviv is Dory Siegel, Executive Vice Chairman of Gazette Globe and Chairman of First Capital Realty. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us, Mr. Siegel. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about the quarter then. Uh, the street uh, disappointed. They thought you were going to come in a little stronger than you did, but uh, we're told it's mostly a currency story for you. Yeah, uh, we report in the Israeli currency, so uh, the Israeli currency has been quite strong over the last quarter and actually the last couple of years. Uh, so uh, the result appears uh, to be a, a slightly less than what people expected, but they're actually not when you would do all the currency adjustments I mean, over the long term. Sorry, yeah. When you have the kind of global exposure you do through your shopping centers, I imagine you have certain hedges in place, too, to try to mitigate any uh, currency bumps here and there. Yeah, absolutely. All our debt is hedged. And actually, when you own a Gazette Globe stock, you basically own a stock that is about 30 percent Canadian dollars, 30 percent U.S. dollars, 30 percent euro, and a mix of about 10 percent of other uh, currencies. So uh, you may have get fluctuations in the reporting part of, of, of the quarter, but not in the actual cash flows or uh, as, as your equity is diverse uh, among the various economies that we operate in. Now, we were just showing the viewers your global footprint, uh, Brazil, the United States, Europe. We know that one of the dominant themes in Canadian retail is uh, a tough time it is for grocers and malls, retailers in general, but the grocery war is really cutting in on margins. That's the Canadian story. What are the opportunities globally in terms of the kind of business you're in, shopping malls that are anchored by grocery stores? So, uh, funny that it may seem, uh, grocery stores in the grocery business it has quite a bit of similarities between uh, the various uh, economies that we operate in. Uh, it is true that it is a very competitive business, but uh, I mean, one needs to remember, we're not in the grocery business. We're landlords for the grocery industry. So assuming you've done a good job over the last two decades, uh, picking up good uh, real estate or good grocery sites, uh, our grocery stores on average are doing extremely well uh, and we're very pleased with this. And I think that's really the key in our business is, you know, we always say there's three parts to it, location, location, location. Right, location, location. I want to talk about one of your deals in Brazil, Sao Paulo. You're buying a 33% uh, interest in a mall there. Brazil has some of the most indebted consumers in the world. Is that the kind of thing you look at and weigh out before you get into a market, how much debt the local person is carrying and their ability really just to go shopping? Yeah, I absolutely. We definitely look at the economy. Uh, but when you look at our activities in Brazil, they're actually in Sao Paulo. Uh, all our assets are in within seven uh, miles uh, from the Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo uh, city center. The new assets that we have acquired, we haven't closed it yet. We're supposed to close early next year. Cidade Jardim is one of the highest quality shopping centers in the country. Uh, our experience shows that when you look at other geographies they're in, those type of properties would probably be almost impossible to acquire or to own. We know in Canada, it was, those are the kind of properties that Cadillac Fairview or Oxford uh, would own, or in the state, maybe a Simon or a General Growth. So we're, we're extremely pleased that we had the opportunity to partner with, with a local uh, family who are great developers. And this, this is really a nice opportunity. We hope we can contribute to the partnership with our retail experience. Now, some of the analysts that we talked to who cover Gazette Global uh, tell us that they expect you, as you uh, reach out in these international markets and grow there, to tap the debt markets there as well. What are the plans in some of those markets to go, to go and tap those debt markets? Uh, well, originally when Gazette started uh, in the early 90s, uh, our a uh, uh, sole source of capital was the capital market here in Tel Aviv, and we owe a great deal to our uh, Israeli investors for starting up the business and allowing us to grow globally. Uh, as the company grew, we have raised both equity and debt in the respective market that we operate in, uh, initially through the subsidiaries, and uh, in the last couple of years, we have diversified our source of capital in the U.S. We're, we're trying to do the same thing in Canada, Europe. Uh, in Brazil right now, we have no debt, uh, so at least for, at this point, we're not raising money in Brazil. So not going to go looking to the debt markets in Brazil. I want to take it home to First Capital Real Estate here in Canada. It's Black Friday. Yes, it's a U.S. event, but it's becoming more and more of a Canadian event. In a tough year we've seen in retail, how important is an event like Black Friday to you and your Canadian businesses? Well, in our business, I think we're going to probably see a slightly quieter day in the grocery stores if everybody <laughs> is shopping the malls. 
So I think that's probably good news. Uh, we, it, we in Canada, we're very focused on the daily necessities, shopping for everyday life. This is our theme. Uh, other than that, our other retailers next to the grocery stores are probably going to have a good, uh, a good day today. Um, but again, our business is, I think, a little less sensitive to economic cycles. And with almost 40% of our tenants today with no inventory, we hope it's a lot less sensitive to online sales as well. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of services, medical services, fitness centers, uh, health food, all the kind of uh, goods and services that in our at least mind fits the new demographic and the new uh, world of consumer young consumers and that's that's what we focus on i wanted to ask you quickly in terms you just said that your business not as a uh, link to the uh, consumer cycles and the economic cycles of course we know in canada a lot of fears that we've reached the top of the debt cycle home prices are soaring we're going to see a pullback in residential what's your outlook for commercial and uh, retail properties the kind of things you manage you know, this is the third decade I'm in this business. I don't remember one decade that I wasn't, that I didn't live in fear. I'm paid to live in fear. So that doesn't really, uh, you know, doesn't really concerns me in terms of the macroeconomic. There is very little, there is very little a company like us can do with the macro. Let me just give you an example. Everybody knows our Yorkville Village uh, project. Uh -huh. There is a project that starts in 2010 and will be probably in 2020, not even two-thirds into its full potential. We deal in assets that has, uh, you know, between five to 20 years of, of, of development and, and until they reach uh, their full potential. So we can't really look at the next two years. Uh, we look for assets that would, in the fullness of time, uh, will we'll operate and, and grow NOI, and you can do this only by careful, uh, by careful a peak of demographics, locations, nodes, and I think a mix of tenant that is sustainable. So I, I don't, I, I don't want to sound like we don't read the newspapers. We do, and yeah. we have the same concern as every other uh, Canadian. However, we can run our business uh, by by short term. Uh, events in the in the financial markets. Interesting stuff. Thanks for taking the time to speak to us today. Thank you. It was Dory Siegel, Executive Vice Chairman of Gazette Globe and Chairman of First Capital Realty.